Fisher, Joel Fisher, Joel Fisher. Henry Norman. Well, let me tell you. I was just about to hand it back and say, hey, man, right box, wrong name. And then I felt it. <laughs> One of those lovely little plastic rectangles that spells out instant credit. It seems old Big Ugly, the giant computer that keeps trying to stick numbers on people, finally blew one. And I must say, it couldn't have happened to a nicer group, even though it was a mistake. Someone says there's no such man. Here he is, personally pasted together out of computer sheets. There we go. Yay! Terrific! Bravo, Joe. I think this calls for a celebration, a little toast. Go ahead. Uh, to the first 21st century man. To a new spring coat. To the computer who giveth all, may he never taketh away. Uh. <laughs> Um, to Henry Norman. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Here, here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Listen, will you? I mean, look at it this way. Haven't you ever wanted to step out of computer theory and take a little shot at the whole number system? Look around you. We're not students here. We're, we're numbers, computers, man. That's where it is. They pick your courses, grade your papers, and turn out your lights at night. And they even turn on the sprinklers. I'm sorry, Jerry. I told you before. Hey, come on, I'm asking you for your help. I mean, what do you want me to say? Look, it's not just me. There are three others in trouble. All right, what happened? Well, the bank is about to bust poor old Henry Norman. It's going to take a genius to bail him out. And you're it, pal. <laughs> Come on. Should be here any second, I hope. Hi, Donna. Maestro comes. 
Welcome to Cabal, Abe. Your friend, the giant brain, has been giving us a hard time. You know, Joe, the prodigy? This here is Lisa. Life of Lynn Christie. Hello? Hi. And this is Karen McMillan. Hi. Hi. She knows absolutely nothing about computers, so don't be too pleased to meet her, all right? I'm trying to get close to her myself. Anybody down there? Nope. Well, can you get started? I understand you're into something like advanced computer cybernetics or theory or something like that. <laughs> yeah, something like that. The incredible Henry Norman card from with all credit screens. The way I figure it. The way I'm... we figure it. There is a Norman Henry living in town. We looked him up. The giant brain apparently reversed the name and address and sent it to Joe's post office. An obvious computer goof, right? Meant for a rich county, and it comes to an underaged, impoverished member of a despised minority, a student. So we started using it. I mean, what else are we going to do? It's illegal. It's not illegal. It's credit. It's very American to have credit, Avery. In fact, it's uh, more American to use it. It's not illegal, honest. We open this account. And we all kick in when we get money from home. The bills do get paid. I don't know. Don't you see, Avery? Nobody will give students credit because they don't own anything. The problem is the computer has caught its mistake. The bank sent us, I mean, Henry Norman, this credit questionnaire. Lousy with suspicion. Hey, Jerry. I don't get it. Exactly how's he going to make the bank believe there is a Henry Norman when there's no such person? Don't ask me, babe. I am just a poor, dumb med student. I only practice on that thing now and then. You make this thing. Come on. Well, yeah, I figured, Abe. We ought to be able to satisfy the bank through our computer here, seeing as how it's the biggest one in the area. A lot of companies like Seacoast National should have their computers tied in by phone line. That's right, it's called time sharing. Then all their files and records are in this memory bank here, right? That's exactly right. Oh, wow. You mean you can create an entire Henry Norman in here? It's theoretically possible. We don't need a complete Henry Norman, though. Let me have that paper, Joe. What we need to do is lay a little background on it. This is the profile we want. Here, Joe. It's 35. Engineering degree from here, then a master's from MIT. Employed at Dynatech, 28 thou a year. I'd say that's a pretty solid citizen. I think Big Ugly's gonna love it. Now, this could take quite a bit of time. You see, each company has its own code. So it may take dozens of code combinations to get the computer to give you the bank record. Well, yeah, but you can do it, baby. Come on, sit down. Joe, lock that door, will you? What does that mean? I'm just identifying myself to the computer. It's called logging in. Hey, how do you get you to do this? Threaten to shoot your grandmother or something? Come on, let him do his jumbo, will you? Okay, I took the original mistake and the computer correction 
and wipes them out of the memory bank. <laughs> so your Henry Norman is laid in just like you wanted him. Look at that, man. He's even thanking us for the account. <laughs> you might as well take the programs. Then you won't need me. You know what we've done, gang? We've defied all the laws of nature. That's what we've done. We've created a living, breathing, bending man out of sheets of paper and little plastic cards. <laughs> Everybody over the wagon wheel, we are going to celebrate. Call on Henry Norman. Here, Joe, you hang on to these. Give me that. You'll be staying sober. Why always me? You know why. Uh, the prodigy here, he can't drink, you know. He's a uh, hypoglycemiac. Hypoglycemiac. That's low blood sugar. Well, you think a promising young doctor would know how to say that, right? <laughs> Come Thanks, on. Dave. Come on. The party's for you, too. No, I shouldn't. I've got some work to do. You look guilty. Do you feel bad about playing games with the almighty brain? I don't know. Maybe I should. Oh, come on. Now, as graduate medical students, you all might as well get to know Proto. Prototype patient model two. An advance, we think, on the original at Caltech. He's not a bad sort, doesn't complain about the bill, and I think he'll give you all the symptoms you'll need to look for. Okay. Movement. Pulse. Respiration. Even down to skin tone. And if he's not treated right, he's even programmed to die for you. Night. King Bishop Six. Queen to King Bishop Three, and score another one for Big Ugly the Giant Brain. Check me. Oh, no. I'll be dying to finish. Well, you lasted longer than last time. I've got it programmed to see three moves ahead now. If I can get it up to four, you'll have to take up bridge. Mm. <laughs> what have you got programmed for spring vacation? You going home? No, I never go home. Unless I have to. Well, then you're going to have free access to the machine. Yeah, I know. That's why we're all staying. Because we love our computer. <laughs> <laughs> Linguistic. Sentence 13. Run, John. See, John, run. Very good. Oh, hi, Fletch. Would you like to check this program for me when you get a chance? Oh, yeah. What's the matter? Can't get her to talk? Oh, I'm getting it. She knows it's vowels. And now I'm teaching it to recognize fricatives. Oh. But you know, once it can talk, I'll bet it has nothing to say. Either that or it'll talk your head off. Yeah, right. Well. <laughs> run, John. See, John, run. Uh, Lisa, I got a friend here who wants to meet you. Say hi. <laughs> Get out of here, you nuts. Come on, Proto. We're going to go over and see Joe. Wake up, Joe. We got trouble. Oh, no, not again. What's wrong with him this time? He's got kidney failure. Or so it was diagnosed by three of my classmates. I guess, though, he's not even breathing. He's not plugged in, you dummy. Oh. <laughs> The truth is, he's got a short somewhere down here around his navel. Doc Benjamin says, get that bright kid Joel running down or I'm going to have to send it back to Caltech. And I said, not a chance that Joel is into probabilities and game theories these days. Good, because actually he makes me a little sick. I said, not a chance unless it's for me. Oh, I got to remind you again, right, that I fought for you in Vietnam? Here, sit down there. The duty of overbright pathetics like you. All right, all right, all right, all right. I'll tie him into the computer. And I don't know why I got to worry about kidneys. Allergies, that's where the bread is. No night call, no buddy dying on you. Just line them up, zap, zap, zap. Six bucks a head, thank you very much, ma'am. You are strange. Hey, uh... 
Oh, it's beginning to look like Avery. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, can I talk to you a minute, Avery? Oh, sure. You know, I've been playing chess a lot with Joel, and he, uh, well, to put it mildly, he's a high verbal. He talks too much. He's been telling me about this fictitious guy that you created with a computer. Fictitious guy? Joel showed me the program sheets. Oh. You think it's a good idea? I mean, for you? Well, I just thought it was sort of a prank. I know, but I just don't want to see anybody get into trouble. It wasn't my idea. But they couldn't do it without you. You're the only student who's capable out of all. I get the feeling I'm being discussed. Not exactly, unless you've begun to identify very strongly with Henry Norman. What'd you tell him? He didn't tell me. Look, Fletch, but will you? You're an employee here. Just keep the machines running. Don't try and run our lives, all right? I'm sorry you feel that way. Well, we need counseling. We'll go to the counseling center. Okay. You're right. It's none of my business. I'll see you later, Ray. Paternalistic creep will be lucky if he doesn't fake on us. I'll tell you, Jerry, I don't care if he does. You got no business talking to him like that. Just count me out. I don't want anything more to do with it. Practically treating us like criminals. Hi, how are you? Hi. Who is? What happened? Our Henry has uh, received another letter from our friends at the bank, and they would like to know, in no uncertain terms, why Dynatech has no record whatsoever of his employment. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. We better close up the account quick. To close up an account, one must pay up an account. We were behind almost 100 bucks before they were built. There's my new spring coat. 50 bucks. Joe, why do you keep it so hot in here? It's the temperature of the brain. I think better. Uh, here's one, a pair of shoes, low heel, blue and white. Mine. We're up the creek. There's at least a hundred dollars here and probably more. We haven't even... Wait a minute now, don't panic. We knew this was bound to happen sooner or later. They run checks on charge accounts periodically, right? Dynatech is a timeshare on our computer. What we need is a complete Henry Norman. Get him on the Dynatech payroll, then get him a social security card, a complete employment record. I mean, everything a real person would have. He'll be more complete than I am. <laughs> but how can you? Avery's the only one who knows how, and he doesn't want any more to do with it. Well, there's one way. What? One person. Oh. I couldn't do that to Avery. Why not? Hey! What's this? A gun! Who a gun already? Somebody bought it. Case Hardwood. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We, we all have duplicate cards now. Why couldn't Avery have one? Avery. Avery. Hold on. Maybe it was Henry Norman. The real Henry Norman was alive and well and living in the heart of the computer. Cut it out, Joel. It's creepy. Whoever's playing jokes, I don't like it. Will the real Henry Norman please stand up? <laughs>
Hi. Hi. Your landlord told me just to come on back. Can I come in, Amy? Oh, sure. Sure, sorry. I didn't realize that you were here to see me. Well, there's not much of anything else to see you but you. Here, let me help you. Um, I have some beer. Would you like a beer? Yeah. You know, this is probably the only place in the whole school I wanted to drink it out of a can in order to keep from getting a disease off the glass. That was a compliment, Avery. I think. Oh, thank you. Hey, where'd you learn to make such neat hospital corners? In the army, Avery? No, I wasn't in the army. Um, how's Jerry? Why? I hope you don't think that I'm Jerry's property or anything like that. As a matter of fact, Jerry sent me here. To con you into doing something you don't want to do. Boy, you're kind of direct. <laughs> well, six years of psych, I guess I'm entitled. Are you in psychiatry? Please. Psychology. I have my master's. I was at the outpatient clinic. That's why I'm interested in you, Avery. I'm curious what it means when you have the neatest, most spartan room in the history of U.S. education. Well, what does it mean when you keep using my name? You must have called me Avery three or four times. Well, that means I'm trying to make contact. You are kind of a remote guy. <laughs> Hey, what's this? Mm -hmm. Looks kind of complicated. Oh, no, it's not. This is simple binary. Binary? You know, binary system. This is 13. The number 13. It's base 2. They usually account in units of 1, 10, 100. Counting blocks of 2. 2, 4, 8, and so on. And 1 is a yes, count it. 0, is no, don't count. That's the way computers talk to each other. I don't think I understand. I don't think I ever could. Jerry want? Um, Henry Norman again. Listen, I didn't want to come here, but the other did. <laughs> Anything I say is going to sound like a con. Look, you don't have to get involved anymore if you don't want to. I'll just tell Jerry to lay off. No sweat. Well, let me ask you something. What would you like me to do? Everything. It's incredible. No kidding. He's put Henry Norman into every computer in the country, and he's even got a driver's license. Well, how'd you manage that? Genius. Well, some states have computerized their motor vehicle files. They don't require fingerprints, so I just patch it in the phone line. Have you two been here all night? 
Love among the real staff, huh? We got here early this morning. You've been saving your neck while you were in the sack. There you are, Jerry. Henry Norman exists. Social security number, draft card. Draft card? Of course, he's over age. Mm. You look terrible. Actually, I was studying most of the night. I had to drop Joel off this morning at the hospital. He's got that low blood sugar thing. And I bet you got him loaded? No, sweat. They'll change his diet, give him a shot. Well, I have to go to the clinic later on. I'll drop in on him. But right now, we have to have breakfast. Right. Hey, listen. I mean, with this, I can get all the girls I want. Just charge them. Well, don't run up too big a bill. He was only 17. He used to pretend he was 19. All his life he wanted to be older. As old as his kind. Are you going to tell his parents? I've already called him. I was wondering if you wouldn't go over and collect his things. Sure. You can take this, too. I'll arrange for the ship. Avery? You go on ahead. I'll be over in a couple of minutes. Come on. How'd this happen? They gave him Minsk. He's been here a dozen times for the same thing, and this time they gave him Minsk. The nurse somehow got the wrong instructions from the computer's daily pharmaceutical list. And asked me to check on its programming. The manager lives in the back. You better go tell him what we have to do.
was that dumb effigy Joe made. You know, so I think for a minute I thought it was him. But Joe will be getting me, my brother. Some of you must have been here. Only me? Guess we're all here for the same thing, huh? I was just down in the basement looking through Joe's things, and there's nothing much here except Joe's chest. What exactly were you looking for? Anything this kid bought on credit? I'm gonna have to send it back. Well, you went all exactly that fast on our feet. Mark Fletcher just told us to come over here and pick up some of his things. Well. You don't mind if I indulge in a little self-interest, do you? Wild horses couldn't stop you. They were free. I think we should end this business with Henry Norman. You know, you were never really a part of this whole trip anyway, except to do your little number. Jerry. I've had it with all this sanctimonious jazz. He's jealous, too. Well, if he wasn't such a computer freak, a sick one at that, he would know enough just to bug out when he wasn't wanted. Oh, boy, you are such an incredible inhuman slob. Only on alternate Thursdays and when I'm nervous. This must be Thursday. Silence. Silence. You know, he had it up to four moves ahead. I wouldn't have had a chance then. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense, does it? We can create a perfect world in our heads. Joel could. Logical, clean, and pure. And everything works out precisely right. But in the real world, there are too many variables. Yeah, I can't even figure out what went wrong. What? The computer error at the Met Center. I mean, the central computer here should have some memory of its mistake, shouldn't it? I can't find it. Maybe you could. No. I'm a student, not an employee. I'm sorry, Avery. Just let me alone, will you? Let me alone. You can come in now. Let's see, you're 54D. You can go into the doctor's office at any time.
broken.
for me, Elisa. For what? I just hate to see you crying. Why? Because I'd be showing my emotions. And at least I had some, Avery. down there can run this whole building. Runs the whole college, Chair. We mean those functions which are electrical mostly, the light security systems, the elevator. And you're the one that runs it. You understand that thing? No. No, I'm just a technician, really. You're going to need somebody on the level of theory. Computers are a new world. Yeah, that's what they tell me. Dr. Birch. Almost everyone is gone for the vacation period. But I did put in a call to Dr. Eddy at Michigan State. He's one of the few who may be able to help. Or that young man, Avery Jensen. He knows as much about these things as anyone else. He doesn't seem very anxious to see us. Avery's a brilliant student, but he's abnormally shy. Also, he knew the dead girl. You know, if there's anything I don't look forward to, it's spending some time with a brilliant student who's abnormally shy. about Joel and Lisa just haven't hung out any signs, okay? I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, Jerry. I, I even snapped at poor Avery. Yeah, poor Avery. Listen, Jerry, I think we should take Henry Norman out of the computer. I can't explain this. Forget but, it. But I've got this feeling. Look, I said forget it. I'm here on a scholarship, and they got a funny morals clause. There's not enough money in the account to close out Henry Norman without the whole roof falling in. You get kicked out of school nowadays, you don't get back in anywhere. So we'll just let Henry sleep in the computer for a while, and we'll all just keep our pretty mouth shut. Well, that's beautiful. That's really beautiful. By any chance, if you happen to explain this to Avery before you sucked him in? Okay. Stop worrying about Avery and start worrying about yourself. Stay away from him. Tell me what to do. The five of us created Henry Norman. Two-thirds of the survivors are standing right here. Now, that's two deaths in two weeks connected to the computer. But you better face it while you still got a chance. There's only one person who has that kind of control over the computers. Do you have anything for Norman? Uh, Henry Norman? I think it might be special delivery.
You're going to need one. Where's Abe? I figure he's going to be here in about 10 minutes. Keeps a pretty tight schedule. You know that, Avery. How could you do this? What does this mean? Oh, you tell me. Did you find what you were looking for? Oh, well, sure, too. I found it in Lisa's slave unit. Why didn't you tell somebody, like the police or somebody? Maybe because that's a message to the machine, not from it. Jerry, cut it out. Let's see what else you got. Henry Norman, General Delivery. Mm -hmm. Where does it come from? I sent away for it to the Bureau of Records. I just wrote a letter in his name and asked for a copy. Wait a minute, I don't get it. He exists. Look at it. We created him in the computer. But now there's actual documents. I found a transcript in the administration file. His old school records, clear back to grammar school. I didn't put any of that in the computer. You gave him things like the degrees, the job record. But not this. I didn't do any of that. Something's happened. I tried to erase him. I wiped the memory banks clean. You what? I went back to the computer and I erased everything. But now it's all back in. I just came from there. It's all laid back just like it was. We can't control him. The computer's thinking in billionths of a second, erasing its own errors simultaneously. We can't do anything about it. Who said this? That you could have made up some phony documents, huh? And if the program is still in the computer, it's because you never took it out! Why not? Why not? I just don't know. Why? That's all. I just don't know why. But I'm warning you, Avery, you stay away from me. I am not Joel and I am not Lisa. So don't mess with me. Well, I'm warning you, Jerry. Keep away from the computers and stay out of that place. Why? What are you afraid I'll find out? Huh? What are you afraid I'll find out? You better come with me. No. Karen? I'm staying. He's upset. He's a little drunk. He might do anything. He might go to the police, the administration, anything. Well, I can't do anything about that. No, but I can if I go after him. Go ahead.
Burned out. Completely destroyed. Boy, the morgue doesn't look too good either. Now, this thing takes in different amounts of electricity, right? Yes, depending on how complex the function. The voltage was too high. There must have been at least a thousand volts when he touched it. But the regulator... Yeah, I know, I know. It's uh, controlled by the computer. Another accident. We're going to get other people in the company to work on it, and maybe they can figure something out. Well, if you can't figure it out, I sure can. All I know is I could have two, maybe three murders here. I can't prove a thing. Son? Sir? You're the politest murder suspect I've ever had. Now, get those things off of them. Sorry about those handcuffs, but you look like the quiet kind of fellow might hurt himself. I never intentionally hurt anyone in my life. And son, I'm going to let you go. Only because I have to. You know, that brain or computer out there, whatever you call it, seems to be a total mystery to everyone around here but you. And it's killed three people. You knew every one of them. And that last boy, now, you didn't like him one bit. You had an argument with him. That much I can't prove. Now, what I'm trying to say is, one of these days, you're going to do something. I'm going to get you. That is, if you don't go over the line of the cuckoo line first. Can I go? Yeah. Son, I'd find myself a good lawyer. Pulling back into himself more and more. Doesn't give very many details. His problems apparently started as a child. He has a history of mental illness. He's been in an institution for three years and I've concealed that from everybody. You haven't concealed anything. It's a matter of record. Anybody could have checked the files. You're being too rough on yourself, Karen. As a matter of fact, I knew there was something in his past. He told me in so many words once. I never thought anything of it. Maybe if I told Jerry. I'm supposed to be objective, aren't I? Trained to be. Then you also know that you can't be objective when it's somebody you care about. That's why I asked you to leave the farm. You seem to understand anyway. Okay, let's face facts. You might be sick. Very sick. Now, this business about the computer being human, that worries me. But it was through the computer that I found his file. It told me. Or warned me. I don't know which. Oh, come on, Karen. Computers do what people tell them to do. I'm just a technician, but I know that much. Now, who would want you to see that file? Avery? Avery himself? Who else would he ask to help him? I think this is the last place you want to be. Why? After what happened. Hoping you trusted me, do you? I don't know. I think you'd better tell him. I read your file. The one they keep at the psychiatric clinic. Doesn't matter. 
It does matter. Karen's worried about you, and so am I. We thought perhaps we should contact your parents. My parents are dead. But the Farsons are alive. I wrote down their address. Yeah. This is where we lived 20 years ago. I just have to see. I have to show you. The house will be all boarded up. There's nothing there. No light. I don't believe he killed anyone. Not Jerry. Not with a computer. You watch where you're going. You're driving too fast. You handle him. I'll handle the driving. Do you think he ought to be driving so fast? What? Please slow down. A mama's boy. He is a fine boy. And if you were any kind of a you man, you don't need a man. You got your little man in the back seat. You don't need your husband, and I don't need you. I'm sick and tired of you and the kids and the whole family. Hey, you leave Henry out of this. You just leave him alone. He'll give you some satisfaction. You grow up. You don't throw your old man right out of here. What is this? He's fine. We were both very lucky. Mm. The other? He just won't communicate to anyone. He just sits there. Art. The police say he tried to commit suicide. But I know he didn't. I know he didn't. What are they going to do? They're going to keep him here a while, run some tests after that. I, I don't know. I don't believe he did it. I won't believe that. Hey, 
Avery, how are you feeling? Avery, please speak to her. Avery, you don't have to talk. Just listen. Karen and I, well, we care about you. And we want desperately for you to get well. This shell of yours is no good. As far as what you believe about the computer, well, I guess I was the one who scoffed. But you know, we haven't been able to find any rational explanation. And someday we all may have to face the fact that you were right. I don't even know if he can hear you. I'm quitting my job here. Going away. But I'll come back if you want me to. I'll keep in touch. You need friends. I want to be one. responsible, you know. I checked. His parents were killed in an automobile accident when he was six. And I didn't believe him. But the psychiatric files? The computer again? You know, in a way, I'm the only one left. I'll say it again. Go. Get away from everything here. This one I like, and it has nothing whatsoever to do with calculus. week I've been running equations and logarithms and computations of different kinds through my head. Imagine me practicing thinking. <laughs> I know a few people who should try. I figured it out without any Norman. Oh, Avery, please. I have. I know all about Henry Norman. He's flesh and blood, Karen. He's real. He's alive. Listen to me. I need you. You're the only one I can talk to. And if I don't, it could all slip away. We created a paper man, the five of us. A complete identity. A cloak. A cloak that someone needed desperately. Desperately enough to kill three people in order to keep it a secret. Henry, please. Remember that Jerry gave the original program to Joel. And after Joel died, no one ever found it again. When I tried to erase everything from the computer, it all reappeared. Because whoever had the program put it back in. And my case history sent to you. Someone counted on my cracking up, and I did. I began to think the computer itself was doing it. But it wasn't, Darren. It was a man. A human being. I don't know. I just don't know. And the birth certificate and the school records. We didn't need those, but somebody else did. But it doesn't make any sense. I was involved, too, and nobody's tried to kill me. You weren't a risk. You never worked with the computer. You didn't really understand any of this. Well, why? Who 
who would need an identity? Someone who was forced to give up his own? A fugitive. A fugitive with special skills he could never use. I know there's a Henry Norman out there, Karen, and I can find him. All I have to do is strip away the cloak and he'll be there. But I have to get to the master computer for just five minutes. Yes, I'm asking you to help me. I can open the padlock on the window. I know the attendance routine backwards. Sorry. I know what you're thinking. You could be helping a madman. A homicidal madman. Every fact seems to point to that. All I can ask you to do is something that I never could. Forget facts, forget logic, forget everything that seems real. Just trust and believe. one of your ideas on the new backup system. If this thing checks out, you'll be heading the entire project. It'll check out. Now, it seems to me I once heard there was a small company down in Texas working on a project like this. But something happened and they just didn't follow through. You ever hear about it? No. Mm -mm. Huh? Then there's just one thing that concerns me. You're going to have to pass one more really intensive security check, so I just hope there isn't anything or anybody. Oh, no, nothing. No one. Just thought I'd mention it. Go on back to work. We're all proud of you, Henry.
apartment. Police were watching, and I thought I'd try here. I'm so glad you came. I tried to get in touch with you, but you left no forwarding address. I didn't want to be disturbed. I came as soon as I saw the papers. Has he tried to contact you? I tried to help him escape. Where is he now? Not in there. Why did you do it? I don't know. I wish you'd been there. I didn't know what to do. Like it's his last link to sanity, that there is a real Henry Norman. A real Henry Norman? A fugitive. Fugitive? Do you think that's possible? I don't know. I believe him when I was with him. I just. I just don't know anything anymore. I try to remember. Did he have any kind of proof? No. Nothing. He just said all he wanted to do was get in the computer room. The computer room? I'm supposed to meet him at 11 o'clock with the keys. Did he get the keys? some kind of a plan. You've got to get out of here. The back way, preferably. I'll see if I can get some kind of delusion from a friend that I... Control, this is Station 2. Come in. This is Hurley. Go ahead. Sheriff, we've got something on that Jensen kid. A lot, maybe. How good a lot? The best. Exactly where he'll be and when. When? The other car is covering the far side of the campus, Sheriff. Good. Now you cover the stadium entrance. You stay with me. Well, if he shows up, we've got him. I feel terrible about doing this. I really thought he was innocent. That's the only reason I let her go there. Hey, Mr. Fletcher, would you mind telling me again exactly what he did? Well, he called just a few minutes after she left. He sounded wild, deranged. I tried to reason with him. I begged him to turn himself in to try and get some help. And he became enraged. He said he'd kill before and he'd do it again if they tried to get him back there. After that, I guess my only thoughts were of Karen and how to save her from now, it's kind of like you were telling me to shoot first and then put the pieces together later. I wouldn't want to tell you how to do your job. No, I'm sure you wouldn't. But if anything happens after what I've told you, it is your responsibility. <laughs>
He's not going that place. You get someone down here with a key. And the head shrinker. It's all over, son. You come on now. It's all right, Sheriff. You're not going to need that. That's not bad when they come to you. Do you want to go on with this dictation, Mr. Norman? No, just tell them that I'll see them at the meeting in San Francisco and sign it cordially. Henry, can I talk to you for a minute? What is it, Bob? Well, Henry, I don't quite know how to say this, but... Uh, well, these men... These men tell me they have a report that a Henry Norman, a man who matches your background exactly, was killed a few hundred miles from here yesterday. Killed? Came through in a computer report. A computer report? Well, naturally, considering what you're involved in, that does raise certain questions. Who are they? If they're from Washington, they want to question you. That's all I know. All right. So let me get my pipe. this guy anyway. I just got the government man's report and I, uh, well, I felt I owed it to you to come in and tell you about it myself. Now, this is Henry Norman, or as you knew him, Arthur Fletcher. His real name was Hennessy, Claude Hennessy. He was part owner of a small electronics place out in Texas. Kind of a scientific genius and a little bit cracked, too, like most of them. No offense. 
Anyway, one day, he and his partner get into a beef about who's to get credit for something they invented. And right there in the office, right in front of everybody, he shoots them. The people don't do a thing. They just stand there and look and let them walk out of the place. People will do that. Nobody ever saw him again. He just disappeared. I guess he came here. He got this little job. Couldn't just sit on it. He wanted to be back in the big time again. I think we know the rest of the story. Thank you, Sheriff. You tell me something. You killed them off with that computer, didn't you? I just programmed in a report of his death. The way we created him is the way he died. Well, that's what made him. And that's what killed him. What'd you put, Bush? Just the date. And the phrase, accidental death. Nothing more. Why? The report the feds picked up on. The one that sent him to check him out. Said he jumped from a building. And they got it the day before it really happened. I was being activated by another computer somewhere. Data seeking. Well, they're talking to one another. That's right. You know what I think? Pretty soon, they're not going to need you. All they're going to need is another Henry Norman. Think about that. Another Henry Norman. He's the first you don't succeed. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, very funny. 